With me today, I have a brand new Volkswagen Jetta GLI. Now, of course, the GLI is a sport-oriented trim to the very popular Jetta sedan. But this one is equipped with a 2-liter, 228-horsepower engine and a limited-slip differential and a whole lot more. So how does this compare to its competitors, such as a Honda Civic Si? That's what I'm here to find out. So in this review, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this brand new Jetta GLI so you could decide if this is the right car for you. Stay tuned. I want to thank the Auto Barn, Volkswagen, and Countryside. They made this video possible. So if you're in the market for a brand new or used Volkswagen, check them out. Their URL is on the screen and in the description below. First, let's look at the outside. There are major differences between the exterior of this GLI versus a regular Jetta. On the front, the chrome grille is replaced with a black honeycomb grille with a stripe down the middle. And the lower bumper is unique as well, and the usual fog lights are removed. The headlights are full LED and have a cool looking daytime running lights wrapped around. Overall, the GLI looks very different on the front, more sporty and more contrast compared to a regular Jetta. And in case you can't tell, there's always the red GLI badge. Moving on to the side, what stands out right away are those 18 inch wheels. They somehow look bigger than they are and you can see the red painted calipers beneath them. The rotors are also much bigger too at 13.4 inches versus the normal 11.8 inches. And of course, you do see another GLI badge. On the back side, you're treated to some LED taillights, a lower diffuser and dual chrome exhaust tips. The deck lid has a small, subtle spoiler as well. And of course, one more GLI badge for good measure. Now on to the engine, and this is what really sets the GLI apart from the regular Jetta. The GLI is equipped with a 2 liter TSI engine pushing 228 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. You can choose a 7-speed DSG dual clutch automatic or 6-speed manual. Of course, I chose the 6 b manual for this review. The GLI also gets a limited slip differential and Volkswagen's XDS electronic differential lock to help manage the torque at each wheel. As for trim levels, there are three to the Jetta GLI. You have the base, which is labeled S, and you get the essentials, such as the LED headlights and taillights, the chrome dual exhaust tips, and of course, that mechanical differential. Now there is a special 35th anniversary edition that comes right in the middle and this is unique because this is the only one that gets adaptive dampeners. You don't even get that on the higher trim. So that's the only one that gets adaptive dampeners and then you get these special 18 inch wheels that are gray painted with red accents and across the car you do get this special 35th edition badging. Now, the Autobahn is the one I'm reviewing, and this is the upper trim. You get panoramic sunroof, you get leather everywhere inside, and you get a huge digital cockpit. Overall, the price starts around $26,000 for the base S and moves up to over $29,000 for the Autobahn. The least exciting part of this GLI is the trunk. It has no frills back here. However, it's big enough for strollers, golf bags, or groceries. And yes, the back seats in the second row do fold down for more cargo room. Moving on to the second row, you're treated to some nice design tour panels and seats. I mean, really nice. Take a look, the seats are covered in a special leather pattern that screams sport and look at the back bolsters for the second row. You're treated to some nice stitching as well that carries throughout the cabin. However, there are no vents nor USB ports, so expect friends or your kids to melt or freeze in a second row while whining about how they're not able to charge their phone. As for space, I'm 5 feet 10 and I fit very comfortably in the second row, at least 4 to 5 inches of leg room and equal amount 
of headroom. I can really feel the back bolsters holding me in in the seat, which is a nice feeling. This is a better view of the front row. Next, let me show you some of the features you'll find in this GLI. Now that I'm behind the steering wheel, let me show you guys the cabin and some of the features you will find in this Jetta GLI. Now, starting with the steering wheel, as you can see, a lot of red stitching, which matches the red stitching on the seats. I do like that. And overall design looks very sporty. You can see a flat bottom steering wheel. You see this chrome that's going around or aluminum, I should say, right? And overall, I do like how the 10 and 2 spot's a little bit thicker, but I would prefer if it was a little bit thicker than this. But I'll let you guys know how this feels once I start driving. And this leather does feel pretty good as well. Now, as for the buttons, let me explain it. It's a little bit hard to get used to because it's kind of all over the place. Now, starting here, these three are for the cruise controls, not adaptive cruise control, regular cruise control. This is to turn on or off and then to increase speed or decrease speed. Now, this button is for the safety features. If you take a look, uh, blind spot monitoring, rear traffic alert, front assist, basically auto park, uh, auto braking, I should say those are all checked it's just telling you whether or not they're enabled and that's it that's the only function now this is for volume okay now if you want to scroll through some of your stations right that's what this is for so you got this for volume this is for going through the stations as you can see right now this is for this digital cockpit well for the most part this is for voice control but this if you press that view button, you can have two different views, which is really nice. This, this digital cockpit is very large, and it's one giant screen. You can see you could have a digital tack and speedometer, right? But if you press view over here, you can have a different view where they pretty much disappear. Now, if this had navigation, this would be awesome if the whole thing was a navigation screen, but right now it doesn't. So it's kind of blank, and you have the miles per hour here, which you can change. So if you press the up and down, this is where you could select various things like speed, range, overview. Let's do overview. So this kind of gives you overview of your car, how long you've been driving, the distance, average fuel economy. This is all since start, right? So there's other things that you can select the economy, trip, oil temperature, and all that good stuff, right? So that's what this is for. Now, moving on to the infotainment screen or infotainment center. This is a giant 8-inch touch screen uh, with a few knobs, but I like this GUI. I like this graphical interface. It's really modern. It's sleek. And as you can see, very responsive, really no lag. Okay. Now, the one that you guys are probably wondering about, apps, you do see Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Those are standard, so that's not going to be a problem. And then you can control various other things, of course, telephone, you can uh, control climate control, media, images, and their settings. Now, if you hit car over here, uh, this will give you more information about the car, but if you hit settings, this is where you can control a lot of the settings, including safety features and just presets, like how you want your lights to be, um, whether or not you know, you want them to stay on or off, um, what to do when you press the key fob, right, in terms of opening a door, inf instrument cluster, setting time and date. There's a lot of stuff that you can control in here. But the one I want to show you is the assistant, uh, assistance settings. So this is where, as you can see, the front assist, the forward collision warning, you could set it to be active or not active, display the distance warning if you don't want that, or... You know, you can, you can change it so that it warns you very early, very late, or even want to turn it off. So there's things in here that's pretty cool that you could control. All right. Now, moving on from here, you do see a climate control, but I want to show you something real quick because in terms of climate control, it's kind of interesting. If you go back to menu here, you do, you can select climate control. So this is how you can set it digitally through the screen. Right, so if you want to increase or decrease, you could do that, right? Take a look. This is really cool. You could zoom in. <laughs> um, you could also control where the fan is blowing, right? Recirculating, all that good stuff. So you can control it here, or you could just hit auto. Just let it do its thing, right? But besides that, you could also control it manually, which, thank God, it's here, because that could be confusing, especially if you're driving. Very distracting. Over here, much, much simpler 
okay? Uh, auto right here, dual climate zones. Of course, you could just turn a knob, very easy, right? Both sides, recirculating max. You could turn off like that. You could sync it, right? And of course, you do have manual buttons over here as well. You have heated seats, ventilated seats. So those are standard on the GLI, which is really nice. Let me turn climate control back on. There you go. That's ventilated seats. And then you do have three for both, ventilated and, uh, and heated seats. Down here, just a whole bunch of space for your phone or whatever. You do have one USB port there. And then moving down, you have the engine start stop, the electronic brake. Okay, this is mode before I get to that. Traction control 12V outlet. Now the mode is where you could select various modes and there's one for custom. So you do have eco, normal, sport, and custom. Under each one, if you hit this info button, it'll tell you, all right? So there's a lot of things you could change. Steering, drive system, front differential lock, climate control, engine sound. On normal, they're all normal, okay? In sport, as you would expect, almost all is in sport, except climate control is normal, which is interesting because if you go to custom and adjust it, this is where you could adjust everything. Now you could even adjust climate control to eco if you wanted max power for, if you felt like, you know, you didn't need that much climate control, you wanted to make it run in eco mode, you can. You could set the engine sound to sport, front differential lock. You want to do sport, drive system. Maybe you want sport and steering. Maybe you want normal, right? So custom, you could do whatever you want. So when I'm testing this, I'm going to go back to normal and sport and see what the differences are between those two. But I love that you have various settings that you can select yourself, and that's really, really cool. All right, so now... You have a six-speed six speed manual in this GLI, which is really good. You have a shifter. Uh, for, my, for my driving, this is not a short throw shifter, a normal shifter, which is okay. But I do like how reverse is on the left side, and there is a lockout, right? So if you're trying to go in reverse, you can't. You actually have to press down, okay? Then you could go into reverse. Right, so there is a lockout. The only thing about that lockout is I'm afraid a lot of people driving might, I don't know, if they get nervous or something, they press it down like that and then maybe they throw in reverse, but in, in uh, either case, you know, it can only do so much, right? So I'm gonna let you guys know how the shifter is and how the clutch is once I start driving, but I like how it's a six speed manual. Of course, you can get an optional dual clutch, seven speed uh, automatic as well, so um, but I, I just feel like six speed is the way to go, especially in a sports sedan like this. Now you got a couple of cup holders and the armrest, just one gigantic space with a USB port, no tray or anything in here. Now, in terms of the dash and overall layout, take a look at the door panel, moving on to the dash. Very, very modern looking, very edgy, right? Very edges, a lot of a lot of edges, creases, um, pointy trim pieces everywhere, octagon pieces. <laughs> There's a lot of it in here, and that's okay because I think it fits the style. I think it really makes you feel like you're in something special. And I got to say, like this cabin quality right now is really impressing me. It makes it stand out from some of its competitors, such as a Civic Si. This definitely does have a more luxurious feel. And as for the seats, let me just show you real quick. They're of course, leather, just like the rear seat, looks very sporty. And of course, you do see the red stitching on the side, right? I do like how it's well bolstered. So I'm gonna let you guys know how these seats feel once I start driving. Now up here, you got some home link garage control buttons, um, some light control. You do have, you do have a large sunroof. Now, it's almost the size of a panoramic, but not quite there. It is quite large, and I like the fact that this cover is see-through, so it lets a little bit more light in, although this is already tinted. But if you wanted to just let a little light in, as you guys can see, you could see through this. I really like that. All right, let's go for a drive and see how this GLI feels on the roads.
not bad. I had a little bit of straight away, so I took advantage of it. Got up to about 60 right there. And it's a good amount of power. It's a good amount of power, uh, to be honest, with 220 horsepower and almost 260 pound-feet of torque. I kind of expected a little bit more. That more, more or less felt like what, um, you know, what, what a Civic Si did zero to 60. So I thought I would feel more, but I was in normal mode. So I'll go into sport mode and see how it is in a little bit. What's interesting is this digital, digital cluster would recommend how you would shift. So right there, it told me, hey, you're in four, go into six. So it'll just tell you to skip gears. Uh, I've seen it where it told me to go from two to four, four to six, three to six. <laughs> so uh, it does make recommendations for you. The clutch is light, but not super light. It, it feels a little, I don't know how you say it. It feels uh, a little vague to me. I know that's kind of a weird description for a clutch, but I don't get a sense of as much feel when I'm stepping and letting go on the clutch, but the clutch is on the lighter side, especially compared to something, say, um, like a WRX. It's nowhere as heavy as WRX, but it is a little bit heavier than, say, a Civic Si. Hondas traditionally have the lightest clutches um, that I've tested. Whether or not that's a good thing uh, for some of you guys, beginners, yes. Maybe some of your you know, seasoned pros, you don't like that. So this is like right there, but a little bit heavier. Now in terms of the shifter, it's okay. It's a, The throw is a little bit longer. I would prefer if it was a shorter throw, but overall it's a six speed and you can't complain. I'm traveling about 55 miles per hour and I do hear some some wind noise, very slight. That's that's creeping through. In terms of road noise, I hear a little bit of, as well. Overall, it's a quiet ride, but not, not super quiet. You know, Volkswagen posts that, you know, their uh, dual clutch transmission is gonna be faster with the GLI, and I have no doubt it is, because dual clutch, they can shift instantly. But there's just nothing, nothing like shifting your own gears, and, um, and it's just more fun. I feel like if you're buying something like a GLI, right, you want a bit of thrill. You want it to be more sporty, more fun, even though it's a perfectly, you know, uh, drivable car daily, right? So that's where I think you got to go with a six speed. You just have to. Around town at low speeds, there's absolutely no need to go into six gear. In fact, if you do that, the car will feel bogged down. So if you're going at low speeds, the way this is geared, you, you want to stick with four, actually. Even five is a little bit too, uh, too much for uh, low speeds. Let's see how the turning radius is in this GLI. Pretty good. Pretty good. Actually, uh, much better than the WRX I just recently tested. For some reason, turning radius in that was just not good. <laughs> Man, great visibility. Let's so much light, especially with the sunroof. The front windshield, um, the back window, very big. The the side windows, I, I feel like the door panels a little bit higher, right? So you feel like you're a little bit more in the car, a bit more cozy right gives you that sporty feel overall there's no problem with visibility from the side windows or from the rear and blind spot is actually pretty good but you also get blind spot monitoring system with the gli so that's not an issue either so if you guys are watching and you're wondering how this compares to a uh, si i will say this cabin is really outstanding this is a very luxurious yet modern sleek looking cabin i would say this cabin quality is definitely a notch up from the si um so those of you guys are wondering but this also costs more too this one i'm testing is coming in around thirty thousand dollars so that puts it five thousand more than the si it would put this in the same category as a cord sport which is also around thirty thousand dollar so it really depends on what you're looking for because you do get more in here, right? The seats look fantastic. They feel great, but you know what? You're paying a little more for it. I feel like the steering, it's electronic assisted. It's supposed to kind of adjust to the way you're driving. Right now in sport mode, I feel like, yeah, there's some play. There's some play in the steering wheel. It feels a little bit light to me. 
The strange thing about the GLI is I really expected more urgency and thrust. Um, with this very powerful engine, almost 230 horsepower, almost 260 pound-feet of torque, uh, I figured this would, you know, I could definitely feel it. You know, the thing is, I don't feel it. I don't feel that much thrust in here. That's probably due to how this GLI is geared, which is why sixth gear, fifth gear, also really kind of bogs down the car when it shouldn't. <laughs> At least I didn't feel that in, in the other cars I've driven with a six speed. So that could be the reason. Now, in terms of the brakes, they're pretty good. Um, I feel like they catch on a little bit a little bit early but that's that's not bad at all it's not heavy feel at all it just catches on a little bit early yeah i could definitely hear that exhaust note in sport mode i mean i'm going on low low speeds just some acceleration i could feel it kick in <laughs> so it does work it tricks you it feels like you know what you're really you're really gunning it but you're not all right what about suspension well the suspension is on a stiffer side i do feel some of the bumps, imperfections in the road, but I kind of expected that. This is more sport oriented, so uh, the springs and you know the shocks are are going to be tighter. It's not a bad feel. So if you're daily driving this, it's definitely not too harsh or too stiff. That's uh, that's not going to be a problem. Finally, let's look at the good and bad to this brand new GLI. Starting with the good, on the exterior, it definitely looks like a good, proper sports sedan. The GLI has a modern and a high quality cabin. The seats are comfortable and both rows are spacious. There is a great digital cockpit and infotainment system. Of course, there is a six-speed manual available. And lastly, the warranty is outstanding with six years and 72,000 miles bumper to bumper. As for the bad, there's a few things. It's not as fast as it should be with the six-speed manual. It does lack some of the safety features that's found in the regular Jetta. There are no adaptive dampeners with the Audubon trim for some reason. And lastly, the fuel economy is just so-so. Overall, I'm giving the Jetta GLI a score of 89, and if you want to see how this compares to its peers, then check out driversonlyrankings.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel and check out some of these other videos.